Nick Poyant, Senior Consultant with Red Hat Consulting. I'm Kari Mendez. I'm a Principal Consultant with Red Hat Consulting. Today we're going to be talking about OpenShift storage. So Nick, from an academic standpoint, we hear it all the time. If you're developing a containerized application or a microservice, it should be stateless. But the reality is we have to deal with state a lot of times. And we need a way to persist that state. And we're going to need a storage solution so that we can persist that state. Can you describe how storage works within OpenShift? So OpenShift leverages the Kubernetes persistent volume framework. Prior to the advent of dynamic storage, the platform administrators had to go in behind the scenes and create many different types of persistent volumes ahead of time. Once those persistent volumes are up and running, applications will then submit persistent volume claims to reach out to the persistent volumes and, and grab that storage. OpenShift's going to review the configurations of those claims specifically and see if one matches up. In the event that OpenShift can't find the appropriate persistent volume, the app, that application is not going to be able to start up until one becomes available. Hmm. Yeah, so manual processes aren't very DevOps friendly at all. And for this reason, OpenShift came out with Gluster Storage. So Gluster provides us with a way of dynamically or um, allocating storage within our deployment. So Nick, can you tell us a little bit about how Gluster works? Gluster is a software-defined storage platform that lives within a variety of different spaces, such as physical, virtual, or cloud-based environments. What Gluster does is it, it takes a hold of uh, many different servers to form a cluster. And within that cluster, you're going to pro provide highly available, high-performing, and redundant storage. In addition to providing all those great features, what Gluster is going to provide you is a native connection protocol. In the event that your environment doesn't want to use that particular native client, Gluster is also flexible enough to support different protocols such as iSCSI or NFS. In the OpenShift space, uh, Gluster primarily comes in two different flavors. We have container-ready storage and container-native storage. Why don't you go ahead and talk about container-ready storage, and I'll take on container-native storage. The bottom line with container-ready storage is that your Gluster deployment is going to exist outside of your OpenShift cluster. So as we can see here, our application has created a persistent volume plane, which is in turn associated with the persistent volume, which is dynamically created for us. That persistent volume is going to be associated with a Gluster volume, which is shown in green here. The Gluster volume is spanning multiple servers and multiple bricks, or disk drives, between those servers. The advantage this gives you is it gives you high availability of your storage, and it also eliminates any single point of failure within your storage solution. So how does container-native storage work? So as you mentioned, you know, CRS utilizes an external cluster. On the CNS side of the house, we're going to provision a Gluster cluster internally to OpenShift itself. Within that cluster space, those CNS containers are able to run on any one of the infrastructure application-based nodes. Though typically what we're going to recommend to customers is that you either deploy those into your application node space or dedicate a set of nodes for CNS directly. Basically, what this methodology is going to do is it's going to prevent any uh, resource contention with things on the infrastructure nodes like routing, logs, Prometheus, metrics, and things of that nature, items that are very resource intensive. So with all that being said, you know, with these two implement implementation choices, what would make me want to choose one over the other? Yeah, so the bottom line is CRS versus CNS is just an implementation detail. You're going to get the same great functionality for your applications and developers, regardless of which approach you choose. That being said, suppose you're at an organization where there's a separate group that's responsible for managing your storage. They may want to maintain control of everything storage related. So in that case, you may want to use container-ready storage so that they can manage this Gluster cluster independently of your OpenShift cluster. Contrary, you might have a greenfield deployment of OpenShift where there's going to be a single team managing everything that has to do with OpenShift, including the storage solution. So in that case, it's a natural fit to use container-native storage. So you've got all your solutions in a single place that a single team can manage. So now that we've got this great infrastructure in place, what does this really buy us? So persistent volumes will no longer have to be created manually as new applications are onboarded. Then we're also going to get this great storage solution that's going to dynamically provision and be robust. The main thing to take away here is that, you know, Gluster is able to handle many different application types, whereas certain storage backends such as NFS just aren't going to fit the bill uh, with certain applications. OpenShift is designed to be DevOps friendly and primarily focused on the speed of application delivery. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you'd like to learn more information about dynamic storage within OpenShift, 
contact your Red Hat account executive and get that conversation started. You can also go to redhat.com services to get more information on our training and consulting services.